Dr. Anand Srivastava's unique expertise is in stem cell biology, protein biochemistry, molecular biology, immunology, in utero transplantations of stem cells, tissue targeting, gene therapy, and clinical research. Yeah. I know. That's just the beginning. (laughs) Dr. Anand started research in the field of stem cells over 30 years ago, before it was an emerging field, and has some of the first published articles in peer-reviewed medical scientific journals. He received the highly prestigious GISTEC Award twice consecutively from the Science and Technology Agency, Government of Japan, and was a keynote speaker at the World Congress Regenerative Medicine and Stem Cell in South Korea. He is part of developing the Stem Cell Transplant Program for four state governments in India and has collaborated on the world's largest state-of-the-art stem cell treatment hospital in Surat, India. So, please welcome the distinguished Geostar Chairman, Dr. Anand Srivastva. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. What a great pleasure for me to be here with such young and energetic people. Uh, I'm coming from, I live in San Diego basically, and uh, I'm coming from there, and I was thinking that, you know, everybody talks, oh, San Diego is beautiful, weather is very good, and this and that. And uh, when I landed today in Phoenix, I think I should forget about San Diego. (laughs) So... (laughs) It's wonderful, you know, it's better. Truly telling, it's today the weather of Phoenix is better than San Diego. There's no doubt. I, I'm, I'm talking, I'm not joking, okay? It, it is correct, okay? So, <clears throat> the most important point to which I feel here, I, I really feel very glad to be here today because it is very diverse kind of audience here. And, and second point is that the, all, all people who are here, I can feel that they really want an answer for uh, the longevity and the well-being, good health, and happiness. Because whatever we do generally, we, uh, whatever we do here or there, the l- last point where we want to arrive is the happiness. Uh, and then happiness, then you come down from that pyramid of happiness, Da, 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 da. then money, health, this, that, social relationship. But I'm not going to take much time about this kind of lecture because if I divert myself, it will go in different direction. But <laughs> <laughs> but important thing, I really want you guys to feel free during my talk. Anybody can ask any question depend on the stem cell or whatever you are thinking because I feel this, this should be very op- open conversation. And... For me also, it should be a learning point that I can get experience for, from you guys also to understand how I can approach in different directions to take this wonderful science of stem cells to make people more healthy and happier. So <clears throat> that, is, that is very important for, for p- people like me. Okay? And I, I, I will certainly share my experience with my peers also. So... Here is the, uh, my company called Global Institute of Stem Cell Therapy and Research. The f- short form of this is GeoStar, uh, and this is uh, founded in uh, San Diego, California. And the vision to cure the human diseases, diseases with regenerative medicine. So we talk today, the, we, are, we are in the best country, basically. United States of America is the best country of the world. We know that. And there is no doubt about it. If anybody has doubt, please tell me. <laughs> <laughs> so the important is, then we come on the medical science today, and we see what is, what is the situation of the medical science today. Where we stand in front, in fact, today, medical science. Do we have the cures of the disease? Because every single day we listen, 
that, oh, this new discovery came. This new treatment is coming. But what is the fact? Okay? Is that only the academics? Or is that particular uh, invention is going to translate to help the human being? Okay? That is the most important question. So I'm going to tell you exactly where we stand today in the, in the field of medical science. So if you take human body, okay? So there are three kinds of classification of diseases or, or problems a human may suffer during entire life period. One kind of disease, so three, three. So it means 100%, so 33, 33, 33, okay, three part. 33%, 33%, and 33%. So first part, you, you get any kind of problem or disease in your body just maybe because of some foreign infection. And that foreign infection may be bacteria, virus, or microorganism, okay? So bacteria, we know if somebody is getting infection of bacteria, uh, like tuberculosis or tetanus or whatever, you know, pneumonia, you, we have wonderful antibiotics today. And we really may, up to, I, I will say, uh, more than 95% even 99%, I can say, diseases today may be cured using the antibiotic if bacterial infection is there. If there is virus infection, like HIV, AIDS, Ebola, and you listen, a lot of, that is also foreign infection. We do not have any answer for those, okay? Though it is foreign. Yeah. Then I'm talking in, in foreign infection disease. Third part of disease is microorganism like malaria or a maybe big problem or this and that, that also we have wonderful antimicrobials. So 99% time you will be cured. Cured means disease is gone and you are 100% healthy again. So top 33%, virus part is still unanswered. You cannot treat that, okay? So out of this 33%, if you remove 10% of viruses, or maybe 5% or whatever, but 20% you have answer. Last 10% you do not have answer. Now second kind of diseases come because of some kind of trauma. We are driving, I get an accident, I have my bone fracture. It's wonderful surgeons, wonderful equipments, and uh, bypass surgery to repair the, um, just clogging in the arteries. Wonderful doctors. Generally you don't listen today that anybody going for surgery and died on at the surgery table. Yeah. But how many diseases you can really treat using surgery? Very, very less. So even I killed 33%. So 33 and 20, around 50%, okay? You can treat. Rest disease, which is not a foreign infection, nor a trauma, is what? What is that? That is the malfunction of body. Okay, there is no foreign infection, no trauma, and there is no answer for those, those diseases like aging. We are aging, okay, what is the answer? You have to maintain your healthy lifestyle. There is no medicine for aging, okay? Or hyper cholesterol, hyper blood pressure, stamina is going down, we are having lung problem, kidney is not working, liver is not working, brain is getting down. Uh, not feeling good because of, I don't know what is the reason, but I don't feel today good, okay? Or today I'm feeling so happy <laughs> because you guys are here, okay? So, so, so I mean to say, these are not the foreign infection, okay? These are just the malfunction of the body. Skin has uh, wrinkle, uh, wrinkles are coming on the skin. These are the malfunction of body, uh, diabetes. So what we can do, even suppose somebody has hypercholesterol, can, can it be treated? Every single day you have to take the pill. Every single day you have to take pill for maintaining your blood sugar. Every single day you have to take pill for maintaining your blood pressure. Every single day you have to take pill if you are having Alzheimer or Parkinson's. So there is no treatment at all. So almost 60% diseases, we do not have any answer at all. And that's what my brain also started working long back. And in fact, I was working on gene therapy because gene, gene, we know genes are the responsible for every single thing. 
and uh, I wanted to change the defective gene with correct gene. I showed it in 1999, long back, that yes, it can be possible. But important thing is that, that even it is possible today, we can do several kind of gene therapies, but we cannot treat the masses because of two reasons. First, we have to have extraordinary facilities, infrastructure, very expensive. And then second, uh, you have to train the doctors, clinicians who really treat the patient. They do not, uh, it's very difficult to train so many clinicians because is, that is very personalized kind of medicine. So you need extraordinary infrastructure and the clinician, and it's very complicated also. Even you have everybody, when you go and change the gene, it's so complicated to cut, paste, it's a lot of complicated problem. But anyway, so then I was thinking, what is the best way? Because I was uh, going through, I, I encountered with several kind of patients and all these people, and the particularly like people who are suffering with dim, different kind of dementia, like Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, spinal cord injury, and muscular dystrophy. When the kids are like in front of parents, kids are dying every single day. Parents are seeing every single day. They want to do everything, whatever they can do, but they cannot do anything. There is spinal muscular atrophy, SMA. I don't know how many people know about that, but those are newborn kids coming. And can you feel that when you get newly married or have a very young people who has all wonderful thinking about the future, everything is rosy for them, OK? And they, because out of love, they get a kid, newborn, so happy. Whole family is happy, OK? And after six months, mother realized that to, now my kid is a little less active. What is going on? Then people, she, she talks with friends and family, OK? Then they okay, do some massage and this and that. Then finally, they so nothing is happening after six months. The kids become one year old, OK? Then nothing is happening. So she goes to doctor. Then doctor, generally, they go for first to their family doctor, OK, physician. He also gives some vitamin and this and that. OK, it's young kid, one year old, no big deal. But after two or three months, nothing happens. Then he, that kid was re recommended for some neurologist or some other. Then they found out it's a muscular, uh, spinal muscular atrophy, where nerve system are slowly degenerating. There is no cure. Kid is not going to die today. He will die like maybe five years, OK? Every single day becoming vegetative state. Miss, can you feel the pain of that young kid? Couples who just started their life. Everything was rosy for them. Now the big stone dumped on them. So that kind of things, when, once you see, you really want to do something if you have a chance to do something, if you are given a chance. And we are fortunate here today that uh, you all have chance. And fortunately, I have the blessings of my parents and teacher, at least, that I am standing in front of you guys today, so I can talk about all these things. But so I was thinking what to do, like thalassemia, sickle cell, a lot of diseases. Thalassemia is there for the kids, sickle cell anemia. Uh, kids dies, and of course. So I was thinking what to do. Then I came to know that, OK, there is a master cell of the body which makes our entire body. So that is what is that master cell? That is the stem cell, OK? So when we came to know that this particular master cell makes the body, then what is the body? Body is the different combination of the organs. So it means each and every single organ is getting made by this particular cell. So in, I'm, ta I'm taking you guys in the history of the stem cell, how I started the field of stem cell in 2000 at University of California, San Diego Cancer Center. So <clears throat> and before that, nobody was really working on this particular modern kind of stem cell. So how to take out those stem cells in the lab, how to culture those, how to really uh, see whether it can be converted into the different kind of tissues or not, what kind of environment you need. It's a lot of, lot of work. And it took, so, so I'm going to just make it more quicker for everybody, because I, I think I have limited time also here. So this is, so this is, this is uh, the vision of our company, that OK, uh, open globally the stem cell Therapy and Research uh, Institute to propagate this science and help the people. 
So there's a research division, that is money eating division, because once you do the research, you need a lot of money. And then uh, this is the therapy division where we do the uh, treatments for the people. And that's what uh, our aim to service the humanity and finally, you know, the outstanding returns for the investors. So I will just, uh, I know most of the people must be knowing today about the stem cell. I'm just giving you outline how the stem cell works. So, so here is the cells which we can culture in the lab, then differentiate into, you, you may differentiate, depends, you know, what kind of stem cell, but I'm just giving you outline, okay? Then whatever organ you want to treat, then just transplant this to the patient who, who's, who wants to repair that particular organ, like liver, brain, kidney, heart, skin, <clears throat> eyes, whatever. So this is the whole concept of the stem cell treatment. So basically, it has endless possibilities. You can say this. Uh, I'm sorry. This is the stem cell. So basically, you can treat whatever you want to regenerate. So you see, I, I was telling you that in, in very beginning, I was not knowing uh, how to really culture the stem cells inside the lab. So previously we were using, oh sorry. Previously we were using uh, the f animal feeder cells. So it, this was feeding to this stem cells. So at least I could culture, this is two, in 2000. I'm talking 16 year back, 16, 17 year back story. And then, but so we can use this in the lab, but we, because it is contaminated with this kind of animal cells, so it cannot be transplanted into humans because it, it is the contaminated product of the animal. Okay? So then I developed uh, this new culture system. You are seeing this is a stem cell, and this, there is no animal cells or anything. So this now in 2004, we could come with this. So at least now these cells may be transplanted into the human. So from this photograph to this photograph, which you see, it took four years for us to come up to that stage. So you can feel that how much it takes to really. Then, as I told, nobody was knowing if you inject this stem cell in the body, what it does. That is, goes and survive, multiply, or try to repair the organs or not. So uh, I was also not knowing in 2002 or three. So, as I told that I was working on the uh, different kind of models, so I injected the stem cell in, in the developing embryo. And, uh, of course, it was not human. <laughs> so, at UCSD, UCSD, University of California, San Diego. And then you see all the dark is, is spot here. So, when we see the embryo, the injected stem cell, the transplanted stem cell went every single place of the body and participated in development of those organs. So it tells in 2003, first time I told to the world that, yes, if you inject a stem cell, it really goes and participate in development of each and every single organ. So that opens the whole new field of the uh, human regenerative medicine. <clears throat> so I, I will uh, not take much time because there are more academic slides, but so I'm coming on this. So as I told, there are a lot of disease like thalassemia. You know how many people know about thalassemia? Thalassemia is the blood-related disease where the kid, it's a genetic disease where newborn has that genetic problem so the blood does not form correctly in newborn born kids. So kids dies, or they need continuously blood transfusion almost every month or every second month. So <clears throat> same way like uh, sickle cell anemia, you know that the, the red blood cell becomes sickle cell, kind of sickle shape, and then it cannot load oxygen. So person dies. And there are other diseases. But important thing, there are a lot of blood-related diseases. So I was thinking, is it possible to generate the blood cells using the stem cell? Okay. So in search of this answer, 
I differentiated the stem cell in the lab towards the real, real blood. So this is the story. I just pass very quickly. But you see this, this cells, this, this dark is having big nucleus and less cytoplasm. So our red blood cell, human red blood cell, does not have nucleus. Okay. So what happens? Cell before the red blood cell, this is the stage where it has a big nucleus. Okay. This is just premature red blood cell, you can say. So it has big nucleus. When it matures, it removed the nucleus. So it became a donut shape here and then load the oxygen. Okay. So in the lab, when I was trying to come from this and I was, I was trying to remove this nucleus from here, like nu removing nucleus from a cell means removing your brain. And you are still telling, be live, okay? Be functional. <laughs> so, so, uh, and the, the <clears throat> so I, I did, so uh, these I was explaining, but I, I did it and the, uh, this is the topmost journal in stem cells. Uh, this is our. This is the topmost journal in the field of stem cells. So this is published. Uh, so in 2007, 6, 4 on our name, my name personally, and this is you see the donut shape, and this is no nucleus. So first time I generated in the lab in 2006, 7 years back, the real red blood cells, which is universal donor, and. Now we are in the process of making this red blood cells in the bioreactor. You know, the biggest problem of the blood, today the blood transfusion is, there are two problems. First, whenever you transfuse blood from one person to another person, there is always the chances of transfer of disease. Okay? And then second problem, there is always a scarcity. There is not enough blood available when you need it. And you have to match and all other things are also the problem. And Today, 80 million unit blood is collected using Red uh, Cross and all these things. But it's still almost 80 to 100 million unit is needed. Okay? Shortage. So, uh, so this, this is going to solve that problem. And 80 to 100 million shortage of blood means 100 billion dollar market per year. If you think about market wise which I really don't think too much because I am a chairman. My CEO, Mr. Devan Patel, is there. <laughs> David and Jay, all these people are more thinking about, forgive me if I say wrong, OK? I, I'm not a money guy, OK? <laughs> so, <clears throat> so anyway, so this is, uh, this, is, uh, this is the red blood cell story which uh, Geostar made and I made. At, uh, and now this is patented on our name. We are under the process of making the red blood cell in the bioreactor. It, takes, it may take a little time, maybe two, three more years, go for clinical trial and this and that. But this is fast clinical trial because there is no uh, nucleus, okay? So there is no gene inside, no DNA. So you are not transferring any DNA. So, so it is easy to get accepted. But anyway, uh, <clears throat> so now, I, I told you the red. Now I told you the. I'm going to tell you the story. This is all personal, personally done by me. I'm not telling somebody else's story. So, same way uh, before 2005 in medical school, we. Uh, I will request if if I'm going, I'm taking much time. Please tell me so I can be more quicker. Okay, <laughs> because once I'm in science, I forget sometimes how much. <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> so what what happens that. Nobody before 2005 in medical schools, we were uh, studying that if brain is damaged or somebody has paralysis, there is no cure. You cannot regenerate the nervous system. So I was also knowing before 2005 that you cannot regenerate the nerve system. So I thought, can we can we repair the damaged nerve using the stem cell? So to make that possible. I designed, I always think out of the box, a very simple experiment. I was, I was just talking with him. So, uh, <clears throat> and we have to think out of the box. We, out of the box. We don't need to fix our mind for something. Okay? Because universe is too big. And everything is inside. So, so what I did, I, I damaged one portion of the brain. And then, this is the, then I 
injected this green fluorescent stem cell. Why? Because if we inject the stem cell, so we have to distinguish this stem cell that, okay, this is not the native stem cell, okay, or native cells. How we know that it is the cells which we injected? So to, to, to identify that, I use the gene therapy approach to give a new gene to these stem cells so we can differentiate this injected and the host cells. So, so it's, it's a lot of, lot of work I'm telling you. So, <laughs> very complex. So, so here is the damaged portion. Here is the injected stem cell. I just injected 50,000 cells, not too much, okay? Not millions, just 50,000. And then I hypothesized, is it going to survive or not? Survive, then multiply or not? And multiply, then it's going to really uh, surround the brain or not? So, so now I see, now I'm showing you the real. That was the cartoon, okay? Now, now I'm showing you the real. So that is, that is also published, you see, the topmost journal on my name in 2006, long back, okay? Because I told before 2005, we were studying in the medical school, you cannot repair the brain. So, so <clears throat> when I see after 24 hours of the injection, then I really, do, can you, I don't know if you can see if some green here or not, but I also see yeah. same as you see, okay? Nothing really. Mm -hmm. Then I, I was not sure whether this green is correct or not, so I just wanted to make sure if it is correct, then I, will, I put another chemical, if that is correct green, it will turn into brown color. So you see little brown spots here, okay? But that is after 24 hours, but that is not enough to say that it is really going to do something, okay? So I was, and I, nobody was knowing, I was also not going what is going to happen, okay? So then I left it for one week. After one week, you see a lot of green, this is damaged portion, this is green flowing towards the damaged portion. This is another way to show this blue. This is damaged portion. So after one week, oh, it's a light bulb, OK? Oh, so this, this is surviving, multiplying, and also traveling towards the damaged portion of the brain to repair the brain. And then uh, after two months, if you see, this is damaged portion. This is more bigger. Mag this is brown is the stem cell. And unwanted cells, which was traveling, is gone, OK? That is also important because you do not want all the unwanted cells to exist every single time there. So it should go out. So exactly this happened. And you see this brown? So that tells, and these are some gene and other things. It's a big data, but I'm just, uh, so important thing that first time to the world, and that was published in 2006, so whole new field open of the stem cell and neurology. And now medical school tells to their students, no, if the nerves is damaged, a stem cell may regenerate that. Wow. Okay? And, and it can be, uh, damaged brain can be repaired using stem cell. So, <clears throat> after, so, so, thank you. You see, this, this is the real money for me. When you clap, I really feel that I should do something more. So, 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 <laughs> oh, so, so you, all the neurological diseases, starting from Alzheimer, Parkinson's, spinal cord injury, and uh, SMA, multiple sclerosis, ALS, name it, you know, each and every, paralysis, stroke, every single thing, basically, wherever nurse is getting damaged injury, right? yeah sport injuries so so i told you about how we i made the blood uh, and then i told you the neural system then there is a big problem with the autoimmune diseases a range of autoimmune diseases comes like uh, lupus multiple sclerosis als ms and a uh, lot of blood crohn's disease so Nobody was knowing, I was told that, and today, still today also, that autoimmune diseases, there is no answer 
for the autoimmune diseases. Generally, they try to suppress your immune system. When they suppress your immune system, you invite a lot of other infections. So that is the biggest problem with the autoimmune diseases. And I then thought, can we use the stem cell to treat the autoimmune diseases? And this is the first time, again, in 2007, this is again published. All, all is maintained by National Institute of Health. Our, our data is maintained by National Institute of Health, United States of America. Uh, we don't maintain our data. So uh, every, everything is available uh, through their web page. So this is also published 2007. First, uh, so you see this is Crohn's. Crohn's is the autoimmune disease of the intestine. And if you don't treat, it converts into colon cancer. So this is correct, tight, healthy intestine. And this is, uh, you see Crohn's, very diffuse cells. And then same way we injected uh, stem cell, very less uh, visible. And after two months, you see a lot of cells. So uh, this is, again, just Crohn's. This is normal. And this is after stem cell, again, it came, this Crohn's came to normal. So, so a, a lot of other studies, uh, there are a lot of data. I, I'm just showing some uh, immune cells and immune uh, cytokines, which become normal. So this is, again, first time to the world we showed, yes, autoimmune diseases may be treated using the stem cells. So, so combination with neural cells and autoimmune uh, balancing the immune system, you can treat the combination of the diseases using the because a lot of diseases, or most of the diseases, starts from the immune problem. Almost every single disease at some time point. And then you don't treat, it converts into the different kind of disease. So, so, so this, is, this is the arthritis and all kind of uh, bone and this and that. Everything can be applied here, OK, using this philosophy. So this is, this is wonderful. I, I, I don't know how many people have seen. So this is the real, uh, you see this, this is this look, this is the real nerve cell generated in the lab. Okay. So you see this, it looks like nerve cells. Okay. But it looks like, okay. The scientist is standing and sitting and listening and they, oh, it look, looks like nerve cell, but how you know it is nerve cell. So I told, okay, if it is nerve cell, I put some chemical, it became blue, green and red. I told, now it's the markers for the nerve cells. So I told, no, this is nerve cell. Because then he told, scientist says, OK, it is nerve cell. Then how you know really that it's it working or not? Okay, To show that it is working or not, what I did, I this, this, this you see the heart cell, human heart cell wow. in the plate. Okay, So I plated human heart cell in a petri dish. And then I put those nerve cells on top of that. And let's see. I have to come here for my computer to play this, maybe. So you see that when this nerve cell connected to these heart cells, this, this started beating in the plate. OK? You can see that? So that tells that this nerve cell which I created is correct. OK? <laughs> so, so now, now you can basically treat, again, because it's nerve cells, so you can treat all kind of neural diseases as well as heart infraction, because the problem today, as I told, if there is some clogging, you can always bypass, OK? Good surgery. But if the heart muscle is dead, there is, there is nothing, OK? You cannot do anything. And uh, a very personal thing I'm going to tell my, my father-in-law, who has a heart attack, so he was four bypass, but his ejection fraction was just 10 percent because of heart muscles was damaged. And uh, because he's, he's my father-in-law and, you know, the wife, so. <laughs> so, but, so I was, both way I was afraid. If I'm going to do something and something goes wrong, then again, <laughs> it is on my neck. 
okay and then then if <laughs> and if i don't do something <laughs> then i will be very much accused for that okay that why you didn't do you are doing for everybody you did you could not do my father certainly you have some enmity to my father okay so so i was very it was indecisive basically i was it was difficult for me to decide then my ceo mr patel told dr anand you are thinking too much just do it okay <laughs> that's what i need a ceo okay <laughs> to so so we did it okay and i just i was very careful so uh, i just infused in the iv though i could directly go to the damaged muscle okay but but i told look let's see first iv and if not something not happen then i'll go to direct in the muscle i did just iv after one week his ejection fraction came 45 wow. that is almost n- normal wow. okay so <clears throat> but 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 the credit does not go to me be- it goes to my ceo mr patel okay <laughs> because he pushed me otherwise i do not have courage to do that but the important is that these kind of things we we may do with using these stem cells so uh, there are a lot of patient experience i will not take i'm not going to show you if somebody wants i will, i can show later because i think time is also the problem and uh, so important <laughs> important is that what kind of uh, anti aging we can do using stem cell so and if you do anti just anti aging treatment for stem cell you can ex- uh, enhance your ex- skin te- uh, texture energy level sexual functional metabolism blood sugar blood uh, diabetes and all these things you know maybe better controlled improve mental sharpness and more positive emotions experience uh, less tiredness Uh, and weight improve blood pressure heart liver appetite vision uh, <clears throat> color taste and smell so almost every single organ we may enhance we if we do anti aging treatment so people may feel, person may feel little uh, at least 5 to 10 years younger whatever the situation he or she may be having so, so <laughs> Uh, these are more academic things i am not going to really so uh, this is also not very important so <laughs> uh, so we 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 are able to and we are treating lot of patients at this time we have our uh, clinics uh, and uh, basically hospitals uh, during the int- introduction he told that uh, i was invited by prime minister of india to help the sickle cell disease uh, patients and we are w- under the process of making world biggest stem cell transplant particularly for the sickle cell people in india then we have our uh, hospitals in just across the border mexico at las algodonas and uh, we have another hospital at guadalajara at mexico we have india we are opening at uh, colombia uh, we we have uh, in bangkok yeah yeah ha huh? okay okay you you can go you can come okay okay come you see that's what i uh, again i'll tell that i i need a really a ceo <laughs> you can see my ceo okay he can interrupt me in between <laughs> i i just wanted to respect everybody's time uh, and um, dr anand when he speaks science uh, he can speak for a whole day and <laughs> and and you won't and you don't want to move when he speaks he's amazing and i'm so amazed to hear because he always speaks in front of the scientific community and now he's talking in front of the non scientific community but he's making it so much simple to understand it it is it's phenomenal you know so this is the red red this is okay so thank you
So many, many, many diseases can be treated, you know, uh, ALS, Alzheimer's, autism, anti-aging, beta-thalassemia, cardiovascular cancer, cerebral palsy, diabetes, erectile dysfunction, <laughs> failed exer. It can, you can go on and on and on forever. Uh, this is uh, the very interesting slide. Uh, this is what I want to share, the history, how this science came into reality. You know, what, what was happening, President Reagan, who died because of the Alzheimer's, but he was against the embryonic stem cell research. He was not against um, uh, adult stem cell. Adult stem cell is well-established clinical practices around the world and in America. There is no problem. But embryonic stem cell, there were some issues with it. Uh, so Nancy Reagan came to San Diego to find out the science that Reagan was blocking would have helped Reagan in Alzheimer's or not. At that time, only authority in the country was Dr. Anand Srivastava at UCSD, so they spoke. And that's how the whole debate started in California and Prop 7. Uh, one got approved through Al, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger because Arnold wants to become a governor, you know, and that's how the whole uh, debate started. And then the Prop 71 was proposed, and we got three billion dollar to create the largest government department in Cal state of California called Serum to continue our research. And therefore, today, after so many years, we can stand here and brag that this science was created. But the catalyst behind all this was Nancy Reagan and Dr. Anand Srivastava. And today, we have this science available around the globe. This is a Salk Institute. Salk is the only institute in the world. It was found by Jonas Salk, who invented a polio vaccine, and that's why we are getting rid of the polio. So Dr. De uh, Srivastava developed a stem cell research program for Salk. Uh, this is a Salk Institute, the most famous architecture building, and this is a Dr. Jonas Salk's son, Peter Salk, we were, because we were uh, celebrating his 100-year anniversary to uh, honor Jonas Salk. Uh, uh, Dr. Anand was invited with Obama uh, in 2015 to go to India, by pre invited by prime minister. So Dr. Srivastava uh, was part of the uh, delegation that went there and, uh, you know, to show that how we are doing in America, what kind of science we are doing. Uh, this is the first dedicated stem cell treatment hospital in the world uh, developed by us in India. That was the world's first dedicated stem cell treatment hospital. It was in 2000. 11 inaugurated by Prime Minister of India. Uh, and uh, this is Prime Minister of India, very, very powerful man. Uh, and uh, uh, with the Prime Minister, now we're developing world's largest stem cell treatment hospital. This is under construction. Now the beauty is this, uh, I'm going so fast, sorry. Uh, anyways, that the largest, world's largest stem cell treatment hospital is being built for the most downtrodden people on the earth. The, in America, if we do have to do stem cell transplant for sickle cell anemia, it costs about a quarter million dollars to start with. We are building world's largest stem cell hospital for, to the most downtrodden people uh, in India. They don't even have their houses. They live in the huts and they are suffering from this disease. The Prime Minister said, I wanted to do something for my people. Would you please help us? So now we are going to take the most advanced science to the most downtrodden people on the earth, and it is for zero dollar. Thank you, thank you. So, so we are going to give access to the most downtrodden people on the earth, the most advanced science. And this kind of reality happens when the personal will and the political will uh, combine together and collaborate. Anything is possible. Nothing is impossible in the world. Um, I was at the defense meeting at the San Diego. You know, San Diego is a military town. I was in the defense meeting. I was in, introduced to uh, uh, Ed, Vice Admiral U.S. Navy, and I went there, and I said, Sir, I wanted to do something special for our soldiers. And he said, Okay, good. What do you want to do? I said, I want to develop the best stem cell transplant program for our soldiers because our soldiers doesn't get everything first. They get it everything last. So he said, Then, Devin, uh, so how much money do you want? And I said, Sir, with all due respect, I don't want any money. I'm here to just tell you that I want to develop the best stem cell program for our soldier. He said, but then you want money. I said, no, I don't want money. I want to just develop the science and treatment program. And so he said, Devin, look around. You are at the defense meeting. And I'm coming to this meeting for the last 20 years. And everybody comes here because I have a lot of deep pockets. And you're the first one who's telling me you want to give me something. I said, sir, with all due respect, yes, I do. And I want to develop a best stem cell program for our soldiers. So very soon, we will be doing that for our soldiers. We, 
we we were recently honored by a king of Thailand who just passed away um, uh, to help them bring the most advanced science of stem cell in a country of uh, Thailand. Uh, uh, this is a couple of other projects that is being developed. This one is in a Cal uh, in Colombia. Uh, this one is another project in India. Uh, this is another university that Dr. Anand is helping in India to develop their research program. This is a UCSD cancer center where he started the whole mess 16 years ago. <laughs> uh, these are the universities that he helped develop the stem cell research program. UC San Diego, Salk Institute, Burnham, UC Irvine, UC, uh, UCLA, Center for Burnham. Uh, this was a Goosey Peace Prize, uh, you know, in 2015 when APEC meeting, uh, all the APEC nations presidents came to do the meeting, APEC meeting, we were, Obama was there and everybody was there. That was followed by Goosey Peace Prize. Goosey Peace Prize is like a Nobel Peace Prize in, in Asia. So Dr. Anand Srivastava gave Goosey Peace Prize to the health minister of China. He did not receive, he gave. He was honored to give to uh, health minister of China. Uh, and U.S., you know, Congress honors him for his contribution to the field of stem cell many times. Uh, one of the spiritual leaders from India, Art of Living, uh, Sri Sri Ravi Shankar, he's the one who's responsible to take us to India and make, and he said, Devin, you have to be in India and help our people there. So that's the way we made it there. And, oh, this is another, anyways, these are a few other projects. This is stem cell universities that we're planning to build. <laughs> many, many governments approach us and we try to help them help develop their stem cell research program, stem cell transplant program, stem cell treatment program, so that's what we do. And I just wanted to finish our uh, 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 presentation with one quick video. It's a two minute video that's a, uh, that will give you a lot of information. And after that, you, if you have any question, you can ask Dr. Shivastha, not me. <laughs> <laughs> Just give me a quick second. Some of the world's poorest and sickest people live in India. Thousands are dying from incurable diseases. But thanks to a local company, many are being saved with the help of stem cell therapy. Tenders reporter Robert Santos learned this company is led by a pioneer in this most advanced science. Doctors believe stem cells, the building blocks of the body, are the answer to incurable diseases. For an American to undergo a clinical trial, it'll cost a quarter of a million dollars, at least but in India, it's all free. I can say this is unique. Dr. Anand Saravastava and his team have treated in the last three years about 300 Indian patients at a private hospital. They have been totally cured or partially cured uh, from the disease. Now, the Prime Minister of India has called on him and his business partner to help save thousands more dying of sickle cell anemia and other diseases. I was excited. Yes, let's do it because we are now talking about taking this to the masses. GeoStar, the Global Institute of Stem Cell Therapy and Research, based in La Jolla. It is building the world's largest stem cell treatment hospital right now in India, a $2 billion project. The government of India is paying for it all, including the cost of clinical trials for all patients. So we're taking the most advanced science to the most downtrodden people on the earth. Led by Dr. Anand, known worldwide as an authority in the field of stem cells, having made amazing discoveries at UC San Diego, the Salk Institute, and UC Irvine. He and the Christopher Reeve Foundation got the first clinical trials approved by the FDA to use stem cells to treat spinal cord injuries. I think in five years we will be having uh, cures for several diseases. Dr. Anand believes all because of the work in India. That is the whole reason I'm thousand percent convinced making this a project not just for India, but for the entire world. Robert Santos, 10 News. GeoStar officials plan to meet with India's prime minister at the end of the month when he visits the U.S. to meet with President Obama. GeoStar is also talking with seven other countries who want to build a similar hospital, including China, the Bahamas, Saudi Arabia, the Philippines, and Mexico as well.
So here, so this is the final aim, heal the human suffering through the cutting edge technology of stem cell. And thank you, if you have any question, you're yeah, most welcome. Yeah, thank you for an excellent presentation. Can you, can you maybe summarize just for people here um, uh, some of the uh, practical applications that people uh, can, can benefit from at the, the, there's a clinic that's outside Yuma, outside Yuma right, Yuma. on the Mexico side. So it's pretty close to here. So can you just maybe talk about some of the, uh, just an overview of some of the treatments people could get there? Yeah. So uh, we have very close uh, clinic here. Just you cross the uh, Yuma border and there's Las Algodones. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and, and uh, <clears throat> most of the time, you know, there's a lot of sport injuries and then uh, the bone problem, arthritis, pain in the hip and back pain, and the particularly the diabetes, uh, different type 1, type 2 diabetes, knee problem. You know, you go for knee replacement, it's a lot of surgery and pain. Uh, you take just stem cell. We have developed the technology which uh, can just... Uh, regenerate your uh, damaged knee and just take the injection and it, it, it is better and you are fine and there are a lot of other uh, devastating diseases like uh, Crohn's, vasculitis, scleroder scleroderma, masthenia gravis, liver kind of problem or asthma or lung disease, uh, brain function, uh, beauty enhancement, I can say. I, I will include that in uh, anti-aging kind of thing, like uh, wrinkles or uh, face enhancement or uh, overall in stamina, uh, power. Uh, so all these things uh, may, be, uh, may, be, uh, may be done using the stem cell very easily. It's not complex for us, though it is complex, but it's, it's easy for patients who is going because what we do generally, patient goes there the day we check the blood and we see what are the normal uh, level of uh, what are the diseases a person may have. Then next day, we use the stem cell from the same person. Generally, we take stem cell uh, easily from the uh, belly fat. And uh, that's the two reasons. First, we, we get a lot of stem cell very easily from the belly fat. And second, because of the uh, belly fat, generally, if somebody has a little belly, so it goes down a little bit if he wants or she wants. <laughs> so, two benefits. <laughs> so, so this is, this is the things we, we made. So, second day, we transplanted, and third day, he, he, he can come or she can come. So, very easy. Great presentation. It's amazing what you're doing. Um, I've just uh, this past week been diagnosed with pancreas cancer. Okay. And um, I've got a tumor in my pancreas about inch and a half in diameter. I was wondering if, um, you know, how readily available this kind of treatment or have you worked on that uh, pancreas cancer very much with that? Very good question. And I, in fact, I somehow I forgot to mention it. This is most advanced. I was just talking, focusing on regenerative medicine where the organ is losing the function. There are two kinds of malfunction of the body. Where organ is losing function and another malfunction of the body, body that organ is over-functional in case of cancer. Okay? Organ is over-functional. Okay? So there we have to reduce the function of organ like in pancreatic cancer or something. So we developed wonderful, wonderful uh, therapy for that. That is called cellular immunotherapy. So what is this? Okay, This is so good, actually. We know that whenever any cancer cells are coming in the body, so we our immune system already trying to kill that cancer because that is abnormal cell. So immune cell recognizes that and trying to kill that. But immune cells are not enough in number to kill that because cancer cells are very aggressive. Okay? And that is the reason that we, we have cancer for a longer period of time because our immune cell, cell system is trying to kill. That's what it is not growing so fast. Otherwise, people may uh, have a lot of problem immediately. But so what we do, 
Now we know very well that immune cells are going to kill, but immune cells are not enough in number. So we take out your blood and we know, we recognize what kind of immune cells are going to kill your cancer cells. So we take little cancer cells and give this, then culture these cancer cells in the lab. And then your blood immune cells we take in the lab and also give the memory to these cancer cells. So now we make billions of your immune cells which is targeting to that particular cancer. Okay? And then, thank you for asking this question. And then we re-inject your own immune cell which is targeted for that particular cancer cells to your body. And because it is your own immune cells and now it is so much in number, it, it goes and it start killing your cancer cells. And we have seen already in our patient, we have done in India, several people. So the tumor start reducing. And the best part, it does not have any side effect like chemotherapy and radiation. Okay? Because... Yeah. So this is, this is, you know, God has given everything to us. We have to really utilize that. That's all. And uh, so, so that kills. And still you have, if something is, suppose, not working or something is going out of control, still you have the chemotherapy and radiation, which is available anyway. Okay? But this is the most effective and non-side effect-creating effect way to treat the cancer. So certainly we can help you. I think you should, if you want to talk about costs and everything, I think you should just have a, have a conversation afterwards. Is, is this offered in the clinic outside of Yuma? Uh, uh, we are doing in India, and we soon we are going to establish in uh, Mex very soon in, 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 uh, at Yuma border. We are under the process of setting, setting up the whole laboratory there because it needs a little extraordinary facility. And everything is done, just I have to go there. and So it may take one month or something. Yes. What, um, what experience or knowledge do you have about uh, treating anything in the mouth, such as uh, periodontal disease or regrowing teeth or anything like that possible with stem cells? Yeah, you, you must be... Uh, reading on the uh, web pages and other things. So yes, we can. Uh, you can regenerate the teeth using the stem cells. You can basically, in in theory and in practical also today, you can regenerate any organ, any organ, because we are made of a stem cell. Okay, just we have to know how to really use that. That's all. Any organ, well, because our body is made, body is what? Body is teeth, nose, eyes, anything. Yes. Yes, yeah, so this is uh, from somebody online. Okay. Is asking, uh, his name is Rod, and he's asking, if a person has only 11% body fat, would adipocyte stem cell therapy be the way to go versus bone marrow stem cell, stem cell therapy? Okay. I, I talked about uh, just for the uh, adipose tissue, uh, for you I'm talking. So uh, we have the source of stem cell, bone marrow, peripheral blood, peripheral blood, that is blood, and adipose tissue, and all other organs also have these stem cells. Depending on the situation of a patient and a person facing the problem, we may choose what kind of stem cell we may use. Okay, so answer is yes. We, we can use bone marrow also. Okay, another, I'm just going to cover these questions online then. This is uh, another question uh, from Denise online. She's asking for, I think you referred to it, but where, where can she find uh, on, more online information, more information online about, about the us? stem cells, yeah, your stem cell strategies? Okay, if you, if you use it, visit our webpage, okay. www.giostar.com, you may get, or you can Google it also, so you will get a lot of information about stem cell. 
Okay, and then this is a final question. A genie is asking, what happens when you reintroduce a person's stem cells into the blood with IV therapy? Do the stem cells go where they are needed? Is this therapy helpful? Yeah. Uh, a stem cell goes at the injured portion of the body, and certainly it is going to help. Yes. Thank you, doctor. I think you might have answered my question just now. I was uh, wondering about how stem cell therapy can address the uh, general environmental damage in the food, in the water, in the air. Is there a general, like, intravenous uh, injection that would uh, address yes. that immune yeah. system? Yeah, you're right. You already know. <laughs> Okay. Um, yeah. If a person is is uh, not sick, he doesn't have any problem. But yeah. he is uh, like seventy years old, and you want to enhance his his body and everything. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, there is a, a targeted uh, stem cell that do overall. Yes. Wow. <laughs> that's all. That's what we do under anti aging. Hi. I was just curious. I know somebody who had a brain stem injury. Okay. It happened 20, 25 years ago. 25 years, okay. So Holy because boy. of the time lapse, can, can this help a person because of the time lapse? Uh, I can give more because it's very old injury. So if I may get his uh, little more information, what is the real situation? In general, the answer is yes, okay? But how much? That is the question, okay? 1%, 2%, 10%, 25%, okay. better. That depends when I know exactly what are, what are the clinical situation of that person. Okay. okay. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Hi. I'm Lori. I talked to you. I'm the registered nurse that talked to you um, on the phone with Jim. Oh, Hi. yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember now. Hey, um, when I was looking at your um, screen there and you showed an injection going into the skull, um, really, when we're dealing with the brain, uh, any kind of Alzheimer's or dementia or anything like that that's going to do with the brain, do you do intrathecal or you don't really put an injection in the brain? No, no, no. We do intrathecal. Right. And can you explain what that is after um, you uh, tell me how often are you at Geostar Mexico doing procedures? How often are you there at the one across from Yuma? I, I, I generally don't do any. Uh, I direct whole program. I don't do any treatment using my own hand, but there's a big team, and I frequently visit to every center, including Yuma, mm -hmm. very frequently. Yeah, in, oh, okay, intrathecal, yes, we can do at Yuma, intrathecal. Okay, oh, so intrathecal, she is asking, what is the intrathecal injection? So. Intrathecal is very simple injection. As you know, when uh, generally the woman goes for uh, baby birth or delivery of the baby, uh, doctors give uh, the anesthesia using the spinal, we say a spinal anesthesia. And so what they do, they inject the anesthesia directly in the uh, spinal cord that is called, not in the cord, but the the cerebrospinal fluid, there is a fluid. So they inject that anesthesia in that fluid so it directly goes to nervous system and uh, desensitize that. So same, same route, using the same route, so it is very safe basically because you are injecting anesthesia very, very quite often. So using the same route, we inject the stem cell so it directly goes to the uh, spinal fluid and if we have to target the brain, so it can directly go to the brain. Though we can target using the IV injection also, but it's better to use because it is directly connected with the brain. And it's very safe. Yeah. Okay, in regards to the anti-aging treatment. So first, thank you, because I really appreciate your work, and I know I'm going to benefit, so I love it, and lots of people will. So. I hope you take a lot of your own treatment, so you'll do it for another hundreds and hundreds of years. <laughs> and, but I have a question. My, have a my, my treatment is your happiness, you know, when you clap. <laughs> that, that enhanced my <laughs> Because we need cell. you. 
<laughs> but my question is for anti-aging, how often do you recommend to take a treatment and how um, cost or how much investment do you have to have if I wanted to start anti-aging treatments? Okay, so I don't know your clinical uh, record, okay? But just seeing you, okay? Without seeing your your physical, okay? Appearance and all these things. I think you just need one time. <laughs> you already, you already very young. In fact, in in my eyes, okay. So, <laughs> so that's what I'm telling. But <laughs> if I see your clinical record, then I can uh, really recommend. But if you'll ask me, I'll say you don't need. <laughs> you are already very young. <laughs> yes. Um, <clears throat> oh, uh, it, the cost generally comes somewhere between fifteen to twenty thousand uh, dollars, and it depends when we see that. So it may be less or more. I don't know. And, and it is it is three transplant, not one. Okay, it is three, including everything you are going to stay, your hoteling. You take picking from the airport to the place. <clears throat> so, guys, we have time for like two more questions. Yeah. So there's one. So, um, yeah, just amazing. You're like a real hero to me. All the things you're doing. It's Thank amazing. you very much. Um, kind of a follow up question with that. Back to the the blood trans, the blood stuff that you guys were talking about at the beginning. Is that done and ready to go? Uh, or how the, far away is that? Okay. We tested all, everything is made already in the laboratory situation. Mm -hmm. Now we are under the process of trying to uh, design the bioreactor, automated bioreactor, so we can manufacture at the larger scale. And also, we already tested in uh, animal model and all these things. That's what it was published. But now we are under the process to bring it to clinical trial level. Okay. So few things are still remaining. Does that have potential? Because I know a popular treatment in anti-aging is the infusion of young blood. Is that a possible? I mean, obviously, this is life-saving because people need blood. But on no, the no, there, there is a lot of application. I did not, because uh, I, shortage of time, maybe I can talk all day, basically. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not tired, but uh, I know that everybody is busy, uh, except me here. So <laughs> when it comes science, you know. So important thing. I, I just told you the final step, red blood cell. But each and every single blood, like uh, uh, red blood cell, there are white blood cells, there are platelets, okay? Different kind of cells. Th those are the mature cells. But before the maturation, there is, car there is blood stem cell. There is, a, there is an intermediate stage of the differentiation of stem cell Blood stem cell and mature cell. Mature is RBC, WBC, platelets, whatever. Okay, so this blood stem cell makes all these cells. Now, leukemia, lymphoma, thalassemia, sickle cell anemia, HIV/AIDS, any kind of blood-related disease. Okay, this blood stem cell is the main thing. So suppose I, I'm giving you, this is a real example I'm giving you. Sub, one person was having HIV AIDS, and we, you know that HIV AIDS treatment is not available. Somebody is having HIV problem, it's, it cannot be treated, as we know. So what it was done uh, three years back, <clears throat> that person who was having HIV, entire uh, blood stem cell was uh, killed using the radiation. So th now he does not have any kind of blood or immune system in his body. So HIV virus is also killed because of the immune system was killed. Then we take this blood stem cell, re-injected in his, in his body. So he de we developed all new blood system in his body. Okay, So there is no HIV. He's, that person is now healthy, but his whole blood group was changed with this new blood stem right. cell. So suppose he was having blood group A, now he may have blood group A, B, or maybe O, depending on that particular. Wow. Okay? <clears throat> so there, there, there are a lot of, lot of applications of this, uh, the blood cells, right. or the blood stem cell. Right. 
So the answer is yes, all the autoimmune disease, you, you just irradiate the body, get the radiation, blood is, everything is killed, reinfuse the new blood stem cell. The person is new, basically. It is something like that. You have a computer, have a virus infection in your hard drive, change the hard drive, okay? Put a new hard drive. So the computer is new, okay? So that is like this. Last, last question there. Thank you for your presentation. I have just one question. When I have like a six, seven years old, I have a car accident, and my accident was in my brain okay. and this size. Mm -hmm. Especially when I have any stress or so something, I have like a mm -hmm. old time. I just want to ask how is if I have HIV, IB, or if I have treatment, or how much it's going to cost, or maybe I see you and. Do you know my question? Yeah, uh, certainly. Uh, Wait, that, when I have yeah, six yeah, years old? Yeah, you, you are good, good, uh, Miss. Yes, we can help you. <clears throat> and uh, uh, cost, as I told this, it may vary from same range for the three transplants. Because generally three transplants are good to, because first we do first, then we see how the, you are doing. Then depending on that first, we, we design our second one to build up more. And then depending on second, if you need third or don't need, we decide. So that is the way we go. And uh, the question whether we may help you or not, the answer is yes, we may help you. And the cost, as I told. OK. Yeah. Thank you. It's going to say it's going to be in Juma, Algodon. Yeah, yeah, exactly. OK. Thank you. OK, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you.